This is the new City Catechism question number 44. Question, what is baptism? Answer, baptism is the washing with water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It signifies and seals our adoption into Christ, our cleansing from sin, our commitment to belong to the Lord and to his church. And the scripture comes from Matthew 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is the act of immersing someone in water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you bring them back up again to show that that person now identifies with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are saying to the world that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus. And you're saying to the world that you have died to sin. And that's why you're put under. And you've been brought to new life because of Jesus Christ. And we lift you up out of the water. I want to say a few things about baptism. First, that baptism is an act of the church. If I go to a pool and someone puts, plunges me under the water, that's not a baptism in the sense that Christian baptism is baptism. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, baptism goes along with someone who's a follower of Christ. The leaders of the church are to be a people who disciple, who make disciples, who teach the teachings of Jesus Christ, and they baptize. This is a commission that is given to the apostles, that is given to the church leaders. And in Acts 8, we have a church leader, Philip, baptizing the Ethiopian after he asks to be baptized. Next, baptism shows the believer has union with Christ. And we get this from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ... Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. And there we see what baptism represents. We've been baptized into his death and we're raised to new life. Just like Jesus died, we die to sin, we die to self, just as Jesus was resurrected, God gives us life, we pass from death to life, and we share in the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. Baptism symbolizes that work of grace done in the life of the believer. And the next point, baptism is by immersion. Now, the very word baptism in the Greek means to immerse. And so we reject the idea that baptism is sprinkling or pouring because that's not what the word baptism means. And we see this in the Bible. In Acts chapter 8, verse 36, the Ethiopian asks Philip, look, here's water. What keeps me from being baptized? They get off the chariot and go down to the water and get baptized. Baptism could not happen on the chariot. They had to be in the water the Ethiopian went under the water and came up out of the water. And that's what baptism is. And finally, baptism is for believers only. It is for those who are regenerate, who have the Holy Spirit, who belong to Christ. And we see this in Acts 2.38. That those who believed were baptized. It's part of following the Lord. After Peter preaches the call to trust in Christ, he then calls them to repent and to be baptized. Even going back to Matthew 28, 18 to 20, baptism is definitely connected to discipleship, to the teachings of Jesus Christ, to making disciples. So if you're a disciple of Jesus, you are to be baptized. If you're not a disciple of Jesus, if you do not know the Lord, you are not to be baptized. It's the sign and the symbol and the seal that you are God's. You belong to him. You're his child and you declare that to the world. Thanks for watching and God bless.